Hey there. Thanks for tuning in. You ready for another episode of my Bigfoot sighting? All right then. Let's do this. Seen a bunch of run-down new horse towns where the church is the backbone, loves in the bow. And the five-string melodies groove in. With the farmland rows where the roots run deep. Beyond the noise of the busy streets. Where the songs of the south are soothing. When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out. I don't run from banjo music. Yeah. My Bigfoot sightings happened in the Northwoods of Wisconsin. I was very young. I was 10 years old when the first one took place. Every year, my family, my whole family, we rent cabins. There was eight cabins in total that we rented, and we filled the whole place up. We went up for usually the 4th of July week, and eventually that switched to August. But it was on a lake called Pickerel Lake. We're about 30 miles from the upper peninsula of Michigan, so it's heavily, heavily forested. I mean, it's like the backcountry of Colorado without the mountains it's just all wilderness cabins here and there and just trees in between it's pretty much like heaven so when i was 10 years old it was a week of fourth of july 1988 my cousin and i well there was 14 kids and i was the youngest and the second youngest was 13 and I won't say his name because he is extremely traumatized from this experience. But we always hung out, just us two. We hung out with the older kids, but we are the youngest by at least four years. Well, he was the youngest by four years, so I was the youngest by seven years. So they always picked on us and teased us and whatnot. So we tended to do our own thing unless... uh The adults were around, and we hung out with them more. This particular resort that where we rent these cabins at, it's two miles off the main highway. And after the first mile, there's a fork in the road. And if you go right, you go to a private residence. And if you go left, you go to the resort, and there's 10 cabins total including the owners, and then there was a um, guy that rented one of the cabins year-round. And then about three or four houses, and it's on a peninsula. So you go back there, you know, there's nowhere to run (laughs) except for jumping in the lake. And it's just, it's surrounded by dense, thick, dense forest. So every morning... My cousin would come to my house, or I'd go to his house, and we would walk this main road to go to the main highway. And our main goal was to see bears, or any wildlife, but our main concern was bears. Like, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, I didn't even know that existed at this point in my life. And this particular morning, I'll never forget it, it was like, 85 degrees out already, and it's 10 o'clock, and all my uncles and my dad, they're already drinking beer, having a good time, and they're getting everything ready for the boat so we could all go water skiing, because we tried to do that as much as we could while we're up there. So my cousin comes over, and he is like just pumped. I I don't know what, why he was so pumped, but I know I was eating some sugar smacks or something, some highly sugary cereal. So he came over. He's like, hey, man, you ready to go see some bears? Let's go, let's go, let's go. So I scarfed down my cereal, and we ran out the door. First, you got to walk up this big hill. And then as soon as you get to the top of the hill, it's just forest. 
And there's a bunch of game trails that run through this area. But we took the main road just to be safe on this main road. So it's a two lane road. But if you pass somebody, like you have to go be extremely careful because it's not a full two lanes. And literally, it's the road and then forest, like a foot off the road on each side. And it is thick. I mean, there's no way you can walk through it unless you have a machete or something. Otherwise, you'll just be getting cut up on sticks and trees and whatnot. We get to the road, and um, we're just, like, screaming and yelling, like, Hey, bear! Hey, bear! Come out! Get us! Where are you? Hey, dear! You know, we're going crazy, just, like, yelling and screaming and jumping around all over the place. So, after the first mile, there's this fork in the road. So, if you're coming in off the main highway, to the resort when you get to this fork in the road there's a huge sign it's probably i would say four feet off the ground and it's about six feet wide by about four feet high and then behind that sign there's just a little space and there's just boulder it's huge that is four feet high I measured it, and it's about eight feet wide, I would say, give or take. So, and right in between this boulder and this sign, there's like nothing, but it's a perfect hiding spot. So, we're walking, well, we're acting like idiots going down this highway, and I had my back turned, and I'm just dancing around, screaming, yelling, and my cousin freezes in his tracks and i'll never forget his face it was like it just goes pale white and his eyes just like bug out of his head and he holds his finger up and he's like bear bear and i stop and i turn around and there's this tuft of hair dark black hair And it's probably, I would say, like, 8 to 12 inches above this rock. This rock is 4 feet tall. And I'm staring at it. And this thing stands up and just stared me right in the face. Like, and it stood up. And as it was standing, you know, I thought it was a bear. And I was freaked out, even though we wanted to see a bear. But we were probably 10 feet away from this rock. As it's standing up, I froze. I will never forget it. I was so scared. It took, like, my breath away. Everything. And um, so it starts standing up. And I'm, like, (gasps) trying to scream. And nothing, I mean, nothing would come out. All of a sudden, it stands all the way up. And it, like, lurched forward. And as it did that, well, it, like, staggered. And it grabbed the branch above it and stopped. And I let out the probably the loudest scream I've ever yelled in my life. And I turned around and I booked it back to the resort and when i turned around my cousin was already so this is a mile he's already halfway like he just left me high and dry i just screamed so loud and i booked it all the way back we got back to the resort and my dad and my uncles they're all sitting there and they're getting the stuff ready and i'm crying he's crying and he's just he got there first and he's just standing there like in shock and his dad's like what's wrong what's wrong and i come up and i'm like oh my god there's a monster there's some like gorilla the king kong 
that's what it reminded me of was King Kong. And my dad looked at me and he looks at all my other uncles and they all started laughing hysterically. And they're like, yeah, there's monsters in the woods. But one of my uncles, he was a heavy smoker and he always had a cigarette in his mouth. And I say this because he was lighting a cigarette and he didn't light it. His jaw dropped open. And his cigarette, like, hung there, just sticking to his lip. And then my dad and all my other uncles, you know, they're making fun of us and talking smack. So they're just like, yeah, whatever, you know, get over it. You didn't see nothing. Just go get ready. We're going swimming. My cousin went to his cabin. I went in mine, and I would just sat there for, like, 15, 20 minutes. Just on the edge of the bed, like, what did I just see? Like, oh, my God, there's a monster for real. So I'm from Wisconsin. And I said earlier, all the older cousins, they used to tease us all the time. This is the 80s. Friday the 13th is big. Ed Gein is from Wisconsin, even though he was two hours away from where we were. There was this old cottage, like back in the woods, right off, like, probably 20 yards from our resort. And they all told me he used to live there. So I'm freaking out, like, oh, my God, I got serial killers in the woods. I got monsters in the woods. I didn't even know what to do. I didn't even want to leave the cabin. But then my sister came in and all my other cousins. They're like, come on, let's go, let's go. So we went water skiing and, uh, My cousin did not come out of his cabin the rest of the day. His dad, my uncle, kept asking him, he's like, dude, what's what's wrong, man? Come on, let's go. And he's like, no, I'm not going outside ever again, (laughs) essentially. He finally came out the next day, but he would not come out. I can remember it vividly because I looked it straight in its face the best way to describe it it was like king kong so this thing was sleeping this is you know looking back at it this is what i believe happened because when we first came up on it you saw this hair right and it was like a foot above this four foot rock and it was like you know slowly going up and down a little and then this thing rose And I think it was sleeping because when it stood up, dude, I'm not lying when I say it was 10 feet tall. Was at least, I mean, its shoulders were over four feet. If it's a foot above this rock laying on its side or however it was laying. And it like, it staggered, you know, like it stood up and it staggered and it grabbed this tree branch above it. Which I measured, by the way. I can take you to the exact spot this happened. And that tree branch that it grabbed is almost exactly 11 and a half feet off the ground. And when this thing grabbed it, its arm was bent. I think it was like, you know, we woke it up and it was like super tired and like groggy. And it stood up and was like, you know, and kind of fell forward. I don't know why I'm getting so emotional because it was, you know, so scared because I've never seen anything like this. But it looked at me like, what do you want, idiot? You know, (laughs) like, hey, man, you just woke me up. Okay, we gonna, you need something? Like, I don't know why I always think of this looking back at it. I used to watch The Simpsons all the time. And there's an episode of Simpsons where Homer does something stupid. And he's like, hey, look, there's a bear. And there's a bunch of people around. And there's a bear right there. And they all look at the bear. And the bear is like, I don't know. Just, it reminds me. It reminds me of, like, because I really think, Ben, it's a perfect hiding spot. I mean, behind a giant sign, and there's 
bushes under the side and trees and bushes on the side and this giant rock. So this thing, it was, like I said, like King Kong. The head, it wasn't very conical. I don't, it might have been a little pointed, but it was more round. This thing was just like, it was all black, all black, solid muscle. Its face, I could see, like, its whole body was covered in hair. I know it was a male, looking back at it, like, I didn't see his twigs and berries, if I can say that, but you know what I mean. But it didn't have breasts. It had a flat chest, very muscular. I just knew it was a guy. But it had all black hair. It wasn't real, it was shaggy, or, you know, like, I would say medium length hair his chest like you could see his abs that's for sure and it was like it wasn't fully covered in his in hair and his skin was like a leathery gray but like a light gray because his face i could see clear as day it was just this light gray face very defined jaw i remember that I didn't see his teeth, and he had dark, I wouldn't say black, but dark brown, maybe black eyes. It felt like forever, and it was probably, the whole encounter probably lasted 30 seconds, but I stared in his face for at least 20, because I was frozen and then tried to scream and it was like dust came out like nothing and i tried and tried and tried and then just let it rip ever since then i've been trying to see him or one of his clan again so two years go by after this experience you know nobody believed me my cousin wouldn't talk about it he was just like, nope, no, nope, no, nope, nothing happened. Yeah, whatever. We were just playing. Just wanted to forget about it. So two years go by. I'm 12. I'm sure the older folk remember. And uh, back in the day, Time Life magazine used to have, they do the CD box sets. And then they do the limited edition, like hardcover books for World War One, Two, And then... All that, and they had one that was all like um, I forgot the name of it. My sister has the book. It's a red hardcover Time Life book, and it's like you know cryptids and mysteries of the world. So I'm at my grandpa's house. He was watching us. He had all these books, and I'm looking through them, and I grab this red book, and I'm flipping through it. And there was a thing about Bigfoot. And I saw a picture of Patty. And I was like, oh my God, that's what I saw. It all came. I still thought about it, but it was, you know, I was in the city. I didn't have to worry about monsters, and I suppose. So I didn't think about it all the time. But I still thought about it. But when I saw that picture, like I knew. I was like, wow, I saw a Bigfoot. And ever since then, I've just been obsessed with cryptids. People are like, oh, are you a believer? No, I'm not a believer. <laughs> I know they exist. So I don't have to believe. It's a fact. So this resort that we go to, we go there as often as we can. But in July, well, it was July. Then it went to August. Now it's July again. We still go up there. All the cousins, the whole family goes. So it's my mom, dad, all my aunts, all my uncles, all my cousins. We all go up. But then in May, we also go back. But when we go in May, it's just just the dads and the boys. And we do this. <laughs> Ironically, they've never got mad about this but we go fishing for mother's day weekend 
opening fishing season is in May in Wisconsin. So we go up there. And when I was 30 years old, we're all sitting around talking and we're drinking, you know, and I'm 30. So I think I can be pretty, you know, honest with my dad and my uncles. And we're talking about first, first time, had a beer, first time I did this and that. You get the picture. And my dad sitting there stroking out of <laughs> well, I thought so. He's like, you did what in my house? Oh, my God, I can't believe it. So my uncle was sitting across from me, the only one that didn't make fun of us, the one that had the cigarette hanging out of his mouth. When um, we told him, well, when I told him that a monster was chasing us through the woods. So he's sitting across from me and he goes, well, it wasn't my first time, but the second time I saw Bigfoot. And he looked right at me, and my dad's like, Bigfoot, yeah, whatever. Like, my dad does not remember when I was 10 and me running to him crying that I saw a monster. He doesn't remember that. He just remembers what he wants, but he's like, what do you mean you saw Bigfoot? There's no such thing, blah, blah, blah. So we're in this cabin, right? And it's three bedrooms and the front of the cabin, that's a bedroom. And then with three windows and then the door is right next to these windows. So you walk in and there's like 12 feet and it's a like a mud room. And then you get to a screened in door. He's looking right at me and he's like, yeah, the second time I saw Bigfoot was right here. And he said I was sitting, so I was sitting at the dining room table right in front of this hallway. You can see the lake from where I'm sitting. He said, yeah, I was sitting where you were, and everybody was sleeping, and I was looking at the moon and looking at the lake, and all of a sudden it went all black. He said, I got up, and I walked to the door, and I got halfway and he said a head bent down, and I saw two eyes staring right at me. He just froze, and it grabbed the top of the door, he said, like it was going to come in, and then looked at him and just walked away. So this is the same spot. His first encounter, by the way, was in the UP, deep in the UP. So I believed him, and my dad didn't. Now. When he said Bigfoot, my cousin that was with me when I saw him the first time, he was on the couch. And I swear to you, the same look when we saw that Bigfoot, I mean, he, his jaw dropped open, his eyes bugged out, and he just went pale white. And he got up and he stormed into the bedroom and slammed the door. That was that. We just hung out for a while. My cousin was actually my neighbor for when I first moved out. I was 22, and we were pretty tight. So he was my neighbor for six years, and every time I ever asked him, I'm like, hey, you ever want to talk about what we saw? You know, I mean, I was like, we saw Bigfoot. And he's like, no, we didn't. No, I don't even remember. I don't want to talk about it. And he'd ignore it, and he would walk away every time. So I gave up trying to talk to him about it. Even today, if I brought it up, he would just freak out. I don't know if he watches Bigfoot movies. I'm not real close with him anymore, but I know he doesn't watch horror movies, and he definitely doesn't watch werewolf movies, so I doubt he'd watch Bigfoot movies. He's just like, they ruined him. The next time, I saw Bigfoot was um, same place. And like I said earlier, there's this main road with these forks in the road, but there's game trails like just sporadically off the side of the road. It used to be public land. And, um, you know, when you're going down the road, you take a right to the private estate. He bought up all that land. I mean, it's, hundreds thousands of acres i don't know how much but it's it's a lot of land so this particular trip 
This was in August of 2014. So I have a son, and he has cerebral palsy. He's in a wheelchair. He can't do much up north. We go swimming a lot. That's his freedom. But when he's on land, you know, he's in his wheelchair. And up north is not too forgiving. So to continue the tradition, I would take him for walks to go see bears. But this time in mind, you know, I still wanted to see bears, but I'd rather see Bigfoot or see anything. So when you're on this road, you know, like I said earlier, the forest is literally like a foot away from the road. And it is so dense. There could be a bear, a mountain lion, just a foot into the forest, and you wouldn't be able to see it. They just camouflage themselves so well. So Sunday morning, it was my dad, my uncle, three of my nieces, my son, and then my sister. We're doing this walk. and. We got halfway to the fork in the road, and there was this big pile of poop. I mean, huge. Hands down, it was bear poop. And, you know, we all looked at it. My niece actually almost stepped in it. That's how we found it. You know, my dad, he's, he's an outdoorsman, so is my uncle. We verified it was bear poop. So this was Sunday. So we all take a walk, whatever. Nothing happens. So Monday, my son and I, we go on this walk. Nobody else wanted to go. So I'm being a goof, you know, and I'm telling my son, I'm like, I'm naming off every single animal that could be in the forest. And I'm making the animal noises, you know, we're just, he's laughing his butt off and we're just having a good time. And I'm like, oh, we can't forget about Bigfoot. So I started doing a wood knock. And tried to make a Bigfoot call, but I never actually heard one make a sound besides the recordings on the internet. So I did my best. But when we got halfway, there was a smell. It was like nasty, hot garbage. It was terrible. It wasn't like so bad where I wanted to get out of there, but it was very pungent in the air. So, I, you know, I had my head on a swivel once we smelled this because we did see bear poop. So it's either a bear, maybe a Bigfoot. I don't know. So we walked all the way to the main highway and back. Tuesday comes. The same thing. My son and I, we go for a walk. And there's this smell. I'm like, what is going on? So nothing, you know, we just did our walk. Went back Wednesday and Thursday, the same group that went with us on our first walk on Sunday, they came with. So when we did the walks those two days, there was nothing, no smell. And everything was fine. Thursday night, we're having a good time and we're all drinking. It's like six o'clock. I forgot to mention this. So we go up and we rent out all these cabins as a family. But you have one job, and that is to pick a meal and cook it for the entire crew. You only have to cook once, but you have to cook a giant meal. So it was our turn that night. And I was trying to cook, and my wife, my ex-wife, wouldn't get off the pier. So I started ragging on her. I'm like, come on, give me a hand, give me a hand. And then all of a sudden, my mom's getting in on it, and her mom, and they all gang up, and they start yelling at me when I'm the one trying to cook dinner. So we got in this huge argument. So I'm like, man, screw this. You guys do it. I'm out of here. So the sun was starting to set. Well, actually, it was just starting to come down when I took off for the road. So I'm walking by myself down this main highway. And my brother-in-law and my sister, they were in town. And they come driving, and they're like, hey, man. They're like, get in the car. 
we just saw the bear and it's headed your way. And I'm like, man, no way. You know, I was like, I don't want to ride. I'm not going to run into the bear. I was like, is it heading straight for me? And they're like, well, no, you know, kind of went a little to the left, but you never know. So I was so mad. I was like, no, I just want to walk. Just go back. I'll see you later. So I'm walking and lo and behold, this giant black bear. I mean, he had to be at least 300 pounds minimum. He comes walking out of the forest, goes to the other side of the road, sits down, and he's sizing me up. I'm frozen. I'm like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So he goes into the forest. So he was behind me, and I turn around. So as soon as I get to where he went into the forest, I could hear him. It's like, all you heard was <laughs> making all these crazy noises and crunch, crash. And I mean, he had to be at least 10 to 15 yards away from me, but I could not see him. I could hear him, but that's how dense this forest is. So I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. We get to the fork in the road. Now, when you go right, right in front, of that sign on the right side, there's an opening for a game trail. So as soon as I get to this fork, I turn around and I start walking backwards. And here comes the bear out onto the game trail, back onto the road. He looks at me, crosses back, crosses the street again into the other side of the forest. And he starts walking with me towards the resort. So I was freaking out. I started walking really fast. He must have stopped because I couldn't hear him anymore. And I just took off running, even though I know you shouldn't do that. I couldn't see him. I was like, you know, a quarter mile by this point. I took off running. So thank God I got out of that. But the next morning, the owner of the resort, he's like, hey, somebody hit that bear on the main highway. They hit him like a Dodge Ram, hit him going like 60 miles an hour, hit him in the rear end, and he took off scampering in the woods. So I don't think the bear, he he got hurt, but I'm pretty sure he survived. So I was like, well, okay, cool. So I know there's a bear for sure, and he probably won't be coming over here again. So my son and I, we take a walk. Nobody wanted to go. So we go all the full two miles, all the way to the main highway. We come back, and we get to about 30 yards from this fork in the road. So 30 yards from where I had my first Bigfoot encounter. All of a sudden, the smell is back. And it's really, really strong. So on the left side, as we're walking, we pass a game trail, and it's about, I would say you could fit two ATVs with wise in this game trail. I mean, it's pretty overgrown, but the trees, you could fit two ATVs side by side for you hit a tree. So we walk past the game trail, and we probably would get, I would say, eight to ten feet past it. And there's a smell, and it's crazy strong. I mean, crazy strong. But I froze. I felt that there were eyes on me, and it was close. Like, I literally felt it. Like, I knew we were not alone. My son's name is Maceo. And I'm like, Mace, we're not alone. I, I can feel it. Do you see anything? And I look left. And before I continue, so I'm literally pushing his wheelchair. We're on the edge of the road, one foot forest. I look left, and there is a giant face a foot away from mine. Like, I could have kissed it. Its eyes were super bugged out. 
I looked at dead in the eyes. It jumped like it was holding a branch and it was pulling it down and it was like hiding behind it. So I look left. I make eye contact with this giant face and this gigantic being just shoots up. So we're eight feet from this game trail. Shoots up, jumps over the game trail from the spot it was at. So eight feet, then over the game trail into the woods and takes off running. And this branch is swaying back and forth, like up and down, up and down. like It was insane. And this branch was, it was about six feet off the ground. And when I looked at it, it had two hands on the branch. Its knuckles were right below its chin. And it was holding this branch. So it was like trying to camouflage itself. And this time, it, it wasn't the same one. This thing, its face alone was probably mm, 15 inches wide, maybe. I mean, 12 to 15. And this was a red one. It was red. It was very shaggy. This one had dark, like, gray, leathery skin. Like, I look over. And I just saw these eyes just wide open, staring at me. And they were like reddish brown eyes. And this gray, like light gray leathery face with all this red hair around it. And then just a giant flash of red that stood up and jumped right into the woods. It was crazy. And my son, unfortunately, he cannot talk. But if you were to see him and ask him about it, he would signal you that, yes, indeed. Even though he can't talk, he can communicate. And he would let you know, yes, I saw that. Ever since then, he's been listening to Bigfoot stories every chance he gets. The, I can't tell you how big it was. I know it was big. It was bent over. But the face, if I was a good artist, if I could draw very well, I could sketch you this face, exactly what it looked like. The way it looked at me, the way its eyes were bugging out was like, uh uh-oh, busted. And then it just disappeared in a flash. But it was over, it had to be over eight feet tall. And this was very wide also. It was probably. This branch that it bent down, man, that was like, I would say at least eight feet coming from the tree. And it was in the middle all the way to the end of it. So it had to be at least four feet wide. It had to jump at least 16 feet, just boom, just like that. It was crazy. It was so crazy. So when I got home, I didn't tell anybody about it. When I got back, because I know they weren't going to believe me anyway. They all think I'm nuts for loving Bigfoot, as it is. I have a Bigfoot air freshener in my car. Everybody makes fun of it. But so I got back, and I was on these Facebook groups, and there's a Facebook group in Wisconsin. I won't say his name, because I just I don't know him personally. But he's an ex-FBI officer, and he runs his Facebook group. You know, I told him the situation. And that whole week, and he said, well, there was that bear, that Bigfoot, Sasquatch, whatever you prefer, was looking out for me and my son. Like, me alone, obviously, didn't care about, but it was looking out for (laughs) my son. You know, we could have been in, well, I was in danger the one day, but that creature... And that creature made sure that we were going to be safe. And my son, even though he couldn't walk, was going to be able to walk out of there. And it made me feel so good. Like, 
I mean, it was looking out for us. And it, it just, it's so great to know that, you know, see, a creature like this is definitely, definitely life-changing. A lot of people, there's some violent encounters, there's some mean, nasty encounters, and I get it, you know, I'd be freaked out. I was freaked out the first time I saw one, and I was scared the second time, like, because I could feel it before I saw it, and I didn't know what it was until I saw it, and then I was just like, took my breath away again, like, oh my god. You know, I really wanted to get this out there because there's so many people that have C1 just walking by and they're like, well, I used to hunt all the time and I'm never hunting again or I'm never even going in the woods. That's not right. Like, nature is awesome. And there are things out there, you know, somebody knows what exactly is out there. But they're not telling us, of course. So when regular people have encounters with these, I mean, if you go in the woods, you might see a cougar, you might see a wolf, you might see a bear. I mean, there's danger everywhere. Wolverine or a uh, fisher, those are nasty. And those could really mess you up. But people aren't scared of those because like, they're little, but... I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, it's like going swimming in the ocean. There's sharks there, but we still go swimming. You know, you can't be afraid because there are these beings that, yeah, might be angry once in a while. Maybe it's mating season. Maybe they're hungry. But they're still, like, they're, you know, we're animals, and they're animals, but we're not so different and they're looking out for us, just like I hope they know that there's good people watching out for them. Like, yeah, it's scary. It is scary. And I can't even imagine seeing a dog, man. I mean, that's a whole new ball game. But a Sasquatch, like, it is amazing. It is so amazing. I think they just want to be left alone. If you see one, man, it just... Take it all in if you can, unless you feel there is danger, then yeah, get out of there. So yeah, those were my encounters. I hope I was clear and detailed about everything, but yeah, they changed my life. And I'm not afraid to go in the woods. I truly, I hope I have an encounter with one again. Like, I would love to hang out with one and have a picnic with it, <laughs> you know? I mean, that probably won't ever happen, but people should not be afraid. It's more of a blessing, I think. And it, especially, like, the first time, like, you know, it looked at me like, eh, I'm just minding my own business. What do you want, kid? You know? And this time, when I looked at the eyes, I was more concerned that I actually saw it and was like, oh, oh got to get out of here, you know? But it just meant a lot, and I, I don't know if that creature knew that, but yeah, I, I am thankful. I am very thankful and that my son got to witness it. I mean, that close, literally a foot, maybe a foot and a half away. I tell a lot of people this story, and nobody believes me. The only people that believe me are the Bigfoot people. and. Uh, that have actually had encounters or that just want to believe. But yeah, for the most part, nobody believes me. They just laugh. Unless it's brought up, you know, I don't talk about it. But uh, I'm extremely grateful for those beings. And to say what they are, I would say they're like the missing link. Maybe, but they're not just a primate. They have to be somewhat human. I mean, their faces look human. They just have, you know, some really weathered skin, as would you or I. 
if we were living in the woods all the time. I can't imagine if I am sure like some of the missing 411 cases, you know, I'm sure that some Bigfoots are responsible. But just like humans, you know, when we're trying to mate or trying to do something, we don't let anything get in our way. You know, we're focused and we could be evil. They could be evil, too, but they're not all evil. It's just instinct kicking in. You know, like how many have found kids in the woods and saved them. Just like this one was trying to do for my son. Make sure he was safe. When it stood up, it jumped so fast. Like, I mean, it was just like I looked in its face. We locked eyes. And then, poof. But that branch, it must have went up and down. For at least half a minute to a full minute until it actually stopped. Those are my Bigfoot experiences in Northwoods, Wisconsin. Well, that's it for tonight's show. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let us know. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. Seen a bunch of run-down new horse towns Where the church is the backbone, loves in the bow And the five-string melodies grooving where the roots run deep Beyond the noise of the busy streets Where the songs of the south are soothing When I hear the front porch picking down Home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah The sound of a memory brings me back To the bluegrass playing on my dad's a track Come and it been through it Getting through the day on scrugs and skags Booking their bales to those Tennessee jams There's no other way that I'd do it And I hear the front porch picking down Home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah In the tremolo Kentucky style Those are the anthems drumming now Country boy living When I hear the front porch picking down Home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music The pace of the city life drives me wild The only tune is the cars rushing by on the stereos booming When I hear the front porch picking down Home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah Somebody call it backwards, backwards and double time Getting in the soul and the tremolo Kentucky style Those are the anthems drumming out Country boy living When I hear the front porch picking down Mama's best sweet tea, come and say